episode 55 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali. I live in Kent in the UK with my husband and our two young daughters. And this is my channel to talk about all things knitting and crochet and crafty related. All of those good things. And I also make vlogs. Um, sometimes I do daily vlogs about my daily life and I also do regular sort of um, little vlogs about how I fit crafting into my daily life as well. So welcome to you all. Um, you can find me by the way on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Alley. Um, and all the show notes of everything I talk about is um, are, is, are, <laughs> are underneath this video in the description box. And I also put timestamps there as well um, for each section so you can see um, uh, if you wanted to jump for example around to works in progress and watch it all out of order or something like that you are more than welcome to it's the end of half term here in the uk i have not long got, got back from dropping my youngest daughter phoebe off at school um her school's about a 10 minute walk from here so we always walk the school run um so i'm feeling a bit disheveled it's very very windy here today uh, but yeah everyone's back to school today dan's back to work not that he was ever not at work but you know, um, it's back to normal basically. And it's a really short term. We've only got five weeks until the Easter holidays um, and we're off to Scotland. But that also means we've only got five weeks until April vlogs, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, my next daily series of vlogs will be in April. I did it in April last year and I'll put a link to the playlist for that on the screen and down below. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. April's a busy month, we do lots. Obviously there's Easter. Uh, and we're going away to Scotland, so that'll be fun. Um, so I'm going to try and do a daily vlog every day during April. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to upload those whilst we're away in Scotland. But if not, I'll just upload them when we get back. Okay, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about some finished objects. I've got two, kind of. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, various works in progress, some imminent projects. Um, a giveaway. I've got a new giveaway to talk about, so stay tuned for that. Um, some incoming bits. Um, I've got um, <clears throat> oh, fog in my throat. I've got the latest issue of Pom Pom to talk about, and a new book that I wanted to talk about. And then in my and finally section, I'm going to talk about bullet journals. Not that I really keep a bullet journal, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. Um, so my and finally section is where I get to talk about anything I like. So I thought that would be a nice thing to talk about. Um, thanks as ever for your likes and your comments on my last video i really really appreciate the time that you take to interact with me and leave me a comment or offer your opinion or give me advice or send me links and all of that i i really really do appreciate it i have the loveliest subscribers so thank you very very much for that um oh and the 8,000 subscriber giveaway winner you've still got to get in touch with me you were tammy courtmunch um it was announced in the last episode um, if you could please get in touch with me if you're watching, you were the winner of the 8,000 subscriber giveaway. If I don't hear from you, let's say by the next episode in two weeks, I'll draw another winner. I think that's fair for this particular giveaway because it was a giveaway for subscribers of the podcast. So hopefully four weeks or so will be enough time for you to see that you were a winner. So get in touch with me, Tammy, please. Um, yeah, that's it. So we get started on the podcast proper. Welcome to all new subscribers, by the way. Welcome to new victims of the ramblings. <laughs> okay, let's get started with finished objects. That's my tea almost finished. This is my Denmark mug. Um, if you are a new subscriber, you may not know because I don't think I've mentioned it in a while, but I absolutely love Denmark. It was a long ambition of mine to go. And the year before last, we did as a family and we fell in love with the country. In fact, I think we're going to go back next year. Um, we absolutely loved it. And a lovely viewer of this podcast, Annette, sent me some stuff from Denmark. And amongst it was this Denmark mug and I love it. I use it all the time. Uh, it just reminds me of a place where we had... An amazing family holiday in a very difficult year. So, yeah, nice memories. I'm off on a tangent already. Okay, finished objects. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this already. And you'll, if you followed me on here for some time, you'll know how happy I am that this is finally finished. I think I started this in March last year. So it's been almost a year in the making. I did put it down, you know, here and there. It's not like I've been working on it solidly for a year. 
This is the My Favourite Jeans top. It is a pattern by lovely Natalie of Detroit Knots. Um, she is, I think, primarily a crochet designer. I'm not sure if she's got knitting patterns, but she's, um, I think this year for her, she's concentrating more on Tunisian crochet, which is something that really fascinates me. Um, yeah, so keep an eye on Natalie, Detroit not, so I'm putting her um, Instagram username up on the screen now. Uh, and this is one of her crochet garment patterns. I had awful problems with gauge with this, and in the end, it just came out too small. Um, so I talked about this over the last couple of episodes, and people said, you know, finish it and donate it. Someone will like it. And I thought, no, that's right. I put a lot of time and effort into it. I couldn't really frog it because it's acrylic and I'd already blocked it. So that kind of flattens and melts the fibres a bit. So it wasn't really an option to unravel it. So I finished it and my eight-year-old daughter, Phoebe, was like, what do you mean that was too small? I said, oh, it's just way too small for me. Do you think it would fit me, she said. I was like, well, I think it'd be a bit big. And she put it on. Purple's her favourite colour. And oh, it was so sweet, she looked so cosy and she just didn't want to take it off. So I'm gonna put some pictures up now while I'm talking of Phoebe modeling the My Favourite Jeans top. And she was so happy to be modeling it. She would, like the pictures that you're seeing I've taken in front of the shed in our garden. And she was so happy. What you can't see is she's wearing um, ankle socks and Crocs. <laughs> I cropped those out, but um, yeah, um, she absolutely loved modeling it. And yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it now that it's finished, especially as it's got a very appreciative owner. Um, I decided there's an optional bit on the pattern. You don't have to do this, but on the back, you can do this mesh section. Um, and I did opt to do that. And I really like that little detail. Um, I think that's a really nice little clever design, but you don't have to do that, but it really does look nice and it looks lovely on Phoebe. So yeah, not much more to say about that, I don't think. Um, oh, other than Natalie, when I shared this on Instagram, Natalie shared it in her stories. So Phoebe and I both felt a little bit famous because Natalie's the designer of the top and we were like, oh, she's shared the picture. So. Um, I don't, I don't think Natalie watches this, but um, if you are watching Natalie, Phoebe felt like she was very famous when you did that, so thank you for sharing it. Um, also, if you search the hashtag my favourite jeans, and favourite is spelt in the American way, there's no U in it, my favourite jeans top, um, you'll see other people who've, who've made it, and there are some really lovely versions of this. There's a lady who I've now started following, again, is a Tunisian crochet person or designer, um, and she made a big one of these for herself in like oh, gorgeous colours. And I'm so tempted, even though like this took me quite a long time and I found it a little painful at times. I'm really tempted to make another one, but just make it in like a really big size for me, a really baggy jumper. Anyway, go and take a look at the hashtag on Instagram. Um, you might find it inspiring. So that's my first finished object. Now my second finished object, I was going to bring down my sock blockers for these, but I forgot. Um, so I can't be bothered. I'm just going to hold them up. These are my over the rainbow socks. They are so fresh off the needles that they still have the stitch markers in. They haven't even been blocked. They, I finished the second sock last night whilst watching Downton Abbey. Dan and I have decided to watch Downton Abbey again from the start. I don't know why. We just wanted something easy to watch. So anyway, I finished them last night. This is the first sock. Um, this was made with yarn left over, so I had yarn left over for making the drippity drop socks, enough to make some shorty socks. The yarn is Over the Rainbow by Ellie of Craft House Magic, and the contrast colour is also by Ellie, and it's called, I think, Cloudy Skies, I always forget the name of that one. Um, and I did the heel from one of Ellie's patterns, it's from the Candy Cane Socks pattern, so it's got like a little Christmas tree on the heel. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Let me put my hand in. Um, so, and I just thought, because they're just shorty socks, vanilla, I thought, oh, I'll do an interesting heel. <laughs> and the toes, I did um, the toe from Danny of Little Bobbins, um, Twas the Night Before Christmas socks, because I quite like them. Um, and I just decided for some reason to do the toe like that. 
Um, yeah, so it came out really well. Lilia's got her eye on these already. Lilia really loves shorty socks. She wears them a lot, um, which is really, really great that she's so appreciative of them. And she really likes to know the yarn names as well. She likes them when they've got good names. So, um, yeah. I finished the second sock whilst watching Downton and clearly I was distracted by whatever Downton drama was occurring because I knit the second sock 10 rows shorter than the first sock. I then proceeded to weave in all the ends, kitchen of the toes and everything. So now I'm gonna have to rip back this. And I did look at it and think, God, that looks like a small sock. Maybe it just needs blocking. But it's not that it needs blocking, it's that it's just over 10 rows too short. <sighs> so I'm gonna have to cut out the kitchener stitch and just rip it back. I've got plenty of this blue yarn, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, and rip it right back and then join in again, knit another 10 or 12 rows and then do the toe again which is really frustrating because I felt really pleased with myself for finishing the socks last night and being able to share them with you on the podcast. Annoying, so I'll probably do that tonight whilst we're watching another episode of Downton. Um, but otherwise these are finished and we'll be going to Lilia. I might put them to uh, one side, it's her birthday at the end of March, so I might wrap them up and give them to her as part of her birthday. Right, moving on to works in progress. I'm not sure why I said works in progress in such a mysterious way then. <laughs> I've got some new things though to share with you that didn't exist last time I podcast. So I'm going to start with a hat. It's living in, now I can't work out if this is a Christmas bag or not. Phoebe says it's a Christmas bag because, well, the Christmas, the lining is Christmassy, I would say. Um, well, Christmassy or seasonal? Well, I'll show you and then you can decide. Um, but this was part of my, I did an advent swap with Cherie of Ollie and Bella this year. Uh, and one of the things we agreed to swap was a handmade project bag. And this is the project bag she made me. Um, I sent her a dodgy bag and she sent me a lovely bag. Um, she's got her little label on the front there, her Ollie and Bella, and it's gnome fabric. I, I mean, I think gnomes are all year round. Quite frankly they're not Christmas. Gnomes are definitely all year round and then the lining, sorry if I just wobbled for you, um, is kind of I would say seasonal because holly doesn't have to be Christmas just because it's about at Christmas. Um, I've no idea if you can see that I am filming this I have no idea what I'm filming because I film on the back facing camera because it's better. I just have to hope that you can see what I'm doing. Um, right, inside the bag is a hat pattern. I bought at, uh, where did I buy it? Fiber East. I went to Fiber East for the first time um, last summer with my sister. And I bought some of this amazing Cartreff yarn. Um, you may have already heard of it. It's um, a yarn by Zoe of Pins and Needles podcast, Pins and Needles UK on Instagram. And um, the lady who does Owl About Yarn, whose name has just fallen out of my head. What is wrong with me, honestly? Anyway, it's by Pins and Needles and Owl About Yarn, and they have um, produced a Welsh I'm not explaining this very well. It's a Welsh yarn <laughs> from Wales, dyed in Wales, uh, with Welsh names for the colours as well. So, it, and it's a non-superwash Welsh DK weight, this one. It's 66% um, Welsh mule and 33% blue face Leicester. I just really made that whole description of the yarn really unnecessarily complicated. Here's the details on the back. The colour, I can't say. It's a Welsh word, flam. I'm guessing that means flame. I think that would be a fairly good guess, wouldn't it? From farm to yarn in Wales is what it says on the front. So I bought this at Fibre East and I this is the colour I got. Um, this is what, I mean, I, I'm thinking it's got to be flame, hasn't it? It's this gorgeous orange colour. Um, 
and it's such a nice I love this kind of yarn it rustic kind of rustic it's, it's not soft but I I would be quite happy with this next to my skin because I like this kind of yarn and I knew that I wanted to make a hat with it the moment I bought it I knew it was going to be a hat and I wanted it to be a cabled hat and I also bought this mad pom-pom to go on top because <laughs> it looks like a firework and the whole combination of the orange with this mad fireworky pom-pom just made me think of like November and fireworks night and autumn and my favourite season um, and I just really like the idea and for ages the yarn and pom-pom have just sat next to my computer in the kitchen and waiting for the pattern to crop up and I was browsing Ravelry as you do and looking at free cabled hat patterns and I came across the Hello Yellow hat by Heidi Vaerla. Va Va I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I haven't printed it out because I've just been working from the pattern on my phone um, and it's a sort of quite a simple cable knit pattern. I say simple, I had to restart it three times and you've got this really long um, rib section here which you then fold up I've just unfolded it so I'm gonna refold it um, like that to create a nice chunky rim and then you've got this um, lovely chunky cable that goes all the way up now I start restarted this cable three times because every time I did it it seemed to sort of, it was almost like I was one or two stitches off and it just wasn't sitting right. I couldn't work it out, I, but I could tell it was wrong. And I was going back over it and I think I'm doing everything right. I've got the right amount of stitches. And then I realized there's one stitch instruction missing from one of the rows in the cable pattern on the written instructions. So once I started referring to the chart instead of the written instructions, I was away and it was fine. And I'm so pleased with it. Um, I have done one, two, three, three and a half repeats of the cable and I have to do seven because I'm making the larger size of this hat. The smaller size has six repeats um, and I've only got this left. So I did send a bit of a panicked message. I had a look on the Carter F Yarn site and they don't have any of this colour at the moment. So I did send a bit of a panicked message to Zoe of um, Pins and Needles, who by the way has a really lovely podcast, if you've not checked Zoe's podcast out, it's really, really lovely. Um, yeah, definitely go and watch that. Um, yeah, I sent her a panicked message on Instagram last night, like, have you got any of this colour I've played you on, chicken? And I'm losing! So I've had to cease work on this until I can find out if I can get some more yarn, and then if I can, what I might do is stripe it. Um, because I would imagine that I can't get the same dye lot. Fingers crossed that they have some that I can buy. So um, yeah, but I am so pleased with this. It's the perfect pattern. It's just what I had in my head for this yarn. Um, yeah, and I love the chunky brim. I love the cables. I love how it's all working. I love how warm it's gonna be. Yeah, really, really pleased with it. Really enjoying it. But, oh, and I'm using, look, Luca, Luca, Luca needles, whatever that word is. These were a gift from Lily of Nordic Stitches on my birthday last year. Um, and I hadn't used them before now. They're size 2.5. I had to go down quite a few. I don't think, I think the pattern's like three and a half millimetre needles. And I just couldn't get gauge with those. So I had to go right down to two and a half to get gauge. Um, so I'm using these and they're nice, they, yeah I really like them actually, they're really nice. I always feel like I'm going to break them because um, I think I get quite tense when I'm doing the cables and I'm like mm, and everything gets really tight. So as a result my hands really started hurting, especially here. Um, so I had to put it down for a while to find another project to give my hands a bit of a rest and I decided to do some crochet which I will show you now but before I do I wanted to show you some of the bits that I've got in my project bag for this hat. So first of all, as well as the, the hat itself, which I shall just pop away. Okay, I've got in here my little um, pouch, which is from Sam of Betsy Makes in the lovely lobster. This was actually a gift from Sam ages ago. 
can't believe how long I've actually known you now, Sam. I just, it seems like a long time ago. And Sam is obviously Betsy makes, and she makes the most wonderful things in her, in her Betsy business, as she calls it. Um, so I keep this, and in here I've got a little tape measure, and I've got a little bit of paper just for scribbling on. I've got my cable needle. I've got some cute little scissors. I've got another cable needle. I've got some stitch markers, and I've got a pencil as well. I keep that all in there to keep it all tidy in my project bag and then I also had this little notebook which Cherie had put in you can just about see it says project notes it's very dark in here isn't it I hope you can see me okay um yeah so that says project notes on it so I thought oh, I might just keep notes in here you know as I'm crossing off what, what row I'm on and so on so I decided to make it a little bit pretty and do my little doodles so I've done the the what the pattern is and the details about it and I've done rubbish little dodgy drawings and made some notes about how many stitches I cast on and uh, I made a note that row four of the written instructions is wrong look at the chart um, and then I also made a note of how many grams I had left after completing the rib section which was 64 grams and just all little things I might need to to, to remember what size I'm making, the dye lot of the yarn. And then on the next page, I just did got my little chart. So I, I've got to do seven repeats of that cable pattern. And every time I um, complete one, I color in the little circle at the end. I hope you can see that. I haven't colored in the last couple, but you get the idea. And I've just done little doodles and that. And I'm just gonna keep this with my projects and keep them as a little notebook to work through and a little memento as well. So I thought that was quite a fun thing to do. I like doing things like that. And I thought if I enjoy it, then do it. It's not pointless if you're enjoying it, is it? So yeah, that's my hat. Right, I'm just gonna go and check the light levels. Okay, I don't think it's too bad. I did try turning the lamp on, but I don't think that was helping. I think it was making it worse. So we'll just we'll just go with it. Okay, so because I was working on my cabled hat, um, my hands were getting really achy and I thought, right, I need to do some crochet to give my hands a break to make them do something slightly different. Um, and I've got two crochet projects that are kind of in my mind for starting. So of course I started neither of those, I had all the yarn ready and everything. I thought, no, no, I'm going to start something completely different. And it was because I had been watching the uh, Quirky Monday Craftcast, who is Kalisha, Kalisha Ryan. Um, and I've watched um, Kalisha's um, podcast, Craftcast, sorry, um, on and off for quite a while. She podcasts weekly, so I can't, I can't always keep up and then I get really behind. But I just, for some reason, I think last Monday, I just thought, oh, I'm just going to watch... I'm just going to watch Kalisha today. That's what I'm in the mood for. And I did. And Kalisha's a very calm person. She's very funny. She's very natural. Um, she makes me laugh so much. And she's so inspiring. She does so much. She does different crafts. She's not afraid to try. And I always just come away from watching her podcast thinking like, I want to do that. I want to do this. And um, why shouldn't I do that? I could totally do that. And she just gives you that sort of feeling like, of course you can do that. So she was talking about a shawl pattern that she had designed um, a, a little while ago, and it's called the Just Feel Better Shawl. I'll read you the blurb. It says, we all have those days when we just need a great big hug. Am I right? This shawl is meant to provide a relaxing retreat from everyday stress. It features a super simple granny cluster design and very minimal counting. Because of its simplicity, it will not compete with anything else you decide to do in your relaxing self-care time. Well, I thought that sounds that sounds like the project for me. So I, I printed it off on my rubbish work printer, so you, you cannot really see this at all. <laughs> it's a really, really blurry printout with too much pink in it um, but hopefully that will give you an idea of the shape of the shawl and it is basically this is free by the way it's a free pattern on Ravelry um, by Kalisha Ryan Quirky Monday Crafts and it's just two pages that's it and it's once you've got it started and you're into the pattern it's basically a six row repeat and all the odd and even rows are the same except for the six row and that is it so once you've got that you are away, you don't even need to look at the pattern. I originally, ha I did put a progress keeper, so, so I'll show you the actual pattern and stop blithering. So the yarn I'm using is this. I've had this for ages and I had lost the label 
And then I found the label again, but also the lady that produces the yarn messaged me on Instagram or left me a comment on Instagram and it all came together. So my mum bought me this in 2018. It has just got so much darker again. I've got a feeling it's about to rain. <laughs> um, oh, do I put a light on? Alexa, turn on kitchen light. Okay. Sorry if anyone else has got kitchen light controlled by their Alexa, it's probably just come on now. Um, does that make things better or worse? What do we think? Alexa, Alexa, turn off kitchen light. Okay. What do we do? I think I'm going to go without. It's always better with natural light, I think. Um, anyway, so this is the yarn that my mum bought me. I'm just going to see how this is coming out. And I think it was a festival that we bought this um, in 2018. So I've had it for two years. It's been sitting for ages and it's actually just been sitting on top of my chest of drawers in my bedroom. Um, just because I liked looking at it, but I couldn't find the label. And then I had this idea of where it might be and I have found it. It was tucked away, which is why it's all squashed. So it's quaint, quaint craft corner. It's acrylic it's 100 percent acrylic it's a three ply there's 200 grams here which is about a thousand meters now the pattern i'll just show you the i'll just show you that the pattern calls for 800 to 1200 yards and the pattern sample shown sorry <laughs> that was probably just my arm uh the pattern sample shown here use 1,200. So I'm going to have, mine's going to be a bit smaller, I think, because I've only got a thousand, unless I decide to add some very dark black at the end. Um, yeah, so it's the perfect size for making this shawl, and it's the perfect kind of yarn because it's a gradient, and I can just keep working. I don't have to worry about adding in yarn or tying anything off or anything. I just keep going. So you can see, hopefully, despite the light, that it's going from a very bright red into a slightly darker red, and then it's gonna go into a kind of dark orangey red before it goes into a browny black and then black. <sighs> How much have I loved this project? I love it because I, it hasn't even got a bag because it just sits on the sofa or next to the sofa and I can just pick it up and start. I don't need to think, where am I? I don't need to think anything, I pick it up, I crochet it, I put it down. You don't have to worry about anything. I love this project. It is just what I needed. Kalisha, you are a genius, <laughs> an absolute genius. I love it so much. I've got a project keeper, project keeper, progress keeper. It is a little shortbread because I love shortbread. In fact, I was munching shortbread just before this podcast started. Um, this was on a bunch of stitch um, markers that Dan bought me one year. Um, I think they're from Chapel View, Chapel View Crafts. Um, and that marks the odd side. So I know whenever I'm on the odd side, but actually you, if you know your crochet, you can read your knitting. So you always know what size you're on and you only need to know when you get to the end of the row. Um, yeah, so I am loving this project so much. I don't want to say anything else about it. Um, let's have a look. No, I think I've covered everything. Um, but if you are in need, if you are a crocheter and you love crochet and you find it relaxing and you're in need of something just to sit down and work on without having to think, this is the project for you. And you could use like, I don't know, three skeins of precious, those beautiful precious single skeins that you pick up at yarn festivals. It would be perfect for that because you could just you could either fade them into each other or just stripe them or whatever you wanted to do. And I am very tempted to do that um, after, after I finish this one because honestly, it is a delight. So that is the Just Feel Better Shawl by Kalisha. Kalisha Ryan. Right, another work in progress. Now, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna show this or not, <laughs> but I will. Oh, what's this? Why have I got a pattern in here? Uh, yeah okay so what I decided so I was gonna make the blueberry waffle socks but for some reason I can't remember why I decided not to it might have been the amount of stitches I cast on 
didn't work because I think strangely I cast on something that wasn't divisible by four. I don't know what I was thinking with this. Anyway, I'm using up yarn. I made these lovely socks. Um, what went? Did I use a pattern for them? Let's refer to the... Right, they were my Witchy Legs Halloween socks, which I made with the Green Lampkin yarns from Suzanne. Uh, Green Lampkin yarns, and it was the Witchy Legs colorway. Oh, I just loved them so much. And I've got the card here. This is the Green Lampkin yarn that I'm using. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this is my sock notebook where I just keep very rough notes of everything to do with the socks that I make. So I made these and did I use a pattern? Uh, no, I just did them as vanilla socks and I think I did them with a garter stitch heel just for some interest. And when I um, finished, I had plenty left for another pair of shorty socks. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll make another pair. So I must have cast on the rib thinking, I'll, I'll think of what pattern I'll use by the time I've done the rib. I did a one by one twisted rib. I did a little contrast right at the top. This purple is um, Mothy and the Squid, which was a gift from lovely Lorraine. Thank you, Lorraine. And um, I got to the pattern bit, realized I couldn't do the blueberry waffle and then decided to make up my own pattern, forgetting that I can't do that. <laughs> so I've been writing down what I've been doing and I think I'm going to persevere. Basically, it's going to be like a um, kind of rib thing. So sort of, let's have a look here. Yeah, sort of ribs in blocks going down the leg. But I don't know if I can be bothered because I've just got a feeling you're not going to be able to really see it. And I'm not a pattern writer and I don't know what I'm doing, but I might keep going. And just see what happens and the worst that can happen is I still end up with a lovely pair of socks because the yarn's lovely even if my pattern won't be so yeah so I've done the rib of the first sock basically so this is a bit of a play about this is kind of I don't know knitting doodling not following a pattern I'm just mucking about and we'll see where it goes but isn't the yarn lovely oh it's just so gorgeous Suzanne is a very clever dyer. My knitting looks really messy there, doesn't it? I perhaps shouldn't have shown you that close up. Oh well, <laughs> can't undo it now. <laughs> okay, that is all my works in progress that I wanted to talk to you about, but I have got three imminent projects and I know you're probably fed up of hearing from me about this. I've got my Ziggy Interrupted, which is all ready to go in here. I just need to wind up the yarn. It's a pattern by Sandra of, um, cherry heart this is it oh quite a big pattern so this is it this is the ziggy interrupted i've got all my yarn picked out and it's already in my bag here which is a mrs robinson bag mrs robinson's cupcakes i think she's on instagram there she is and of course it's lobsters so that is all good to go i've just got to wind up the yarn and get started on that I've also got ooh, my As If tea. Now, I've spoken about this quite a lot, and I know you're probably all screaming at the screen, just cast it on already. Stop talking about it and cast the sweater on. And I have spent some time taking measurements and working out what size I'm going to make, because um, I'm terrified that I'm gonna get it wrong. So I have worked out that I need, I've done, a, I've done my, um, gauge swatch so I've done that I know that I'm going to be using 4.5 millimeter needles to get gauge which is weird because I knit quite loose usually and the pattern calls for four millimeter needles but I needed four and a half to get gauge now this is a worsted weight yarn that I'm going to be using it's Triskillian yarn Emrys worsted okay Ooh. that's the yarn I'm using the colourway is penumbral it's this beautiful um, blue colour and I've wound it up and I wonder if actually even though this is a worsted weight I think it's quite a light worsted because if I compare it to the DK weight that is the Cartreff yarn oops that is now on the floor I would say 
so the car tref is a DK weight and the blue is supposed to be um, a worsted weight. <laughs> You're just not going to be able to see that. But they are basically the same, I would say. I haven't done a wrap test on my little wraps per inch thing, but looking at it, they are exactly the same. So I would say that this is a light worsted, which would then explain why I had to go up to, ooh, sorry about that, up half a millimetre in my needle size to get gauge. So now I'm worried that I'm gonna have to open a gauge, but I was quite happy with it. Anyway, there's just, it, there's just so many things to consider. So I did my knee, my swatch and I was quite happy with it and I couldn't really tell, I didn't want it to be see-through basically. I didn't want to put it on and have it be see-through. But then with this particular design, I probably will wear a little vest underneath anyway because it's got a see-through bit all at the top. Um, just in case you don't know what I'm on about, let me show you. It uses an intarsia. Well, there's two ways to knit it, but I, I won't go into detail because it is a paid for pattern. Um, the Azib Tea is a pattern by Shay Johnson of Knit and Crochet. Um, and that's it there. So you can see it uses mohair to create a um, see-through section at the top. So I probably will wear a little vest or something underneath. Um, yeah, and it's designed to be a crop top, but I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Now there's some really good um, instructions in the pattern about all the different options and the way to make it. So there's a couple of ways to do the neckline. Um, it's worked from the bottom up and it, it tells you what to do if you're going to, if you intend to maybe try and make it a bit longer and that is to use a provisional cast on. So I've watched a tutorial on that and I feel confident that, because it sounded scary, but it turns out it's not. So I'm going to do a provisional cast on so I can then come back and make it the length that I want it. Um, and I think I'm going to make the second largest size. So I uh, measured my measurements where is it and without getting too personal here my bust when I measure the fullest part of my bust I get 38 and a half to 39 inches okay so somewhere between there you know taking into account my error so I'm not I'm not pulling it tight I'm trying to hold it quite firm but not putting it tight but I'd say about 38 and a half inches to 39. Um, then I took a measurement of my one of my favourite jumpers that I like to wear that I like the fit of and that measured as 42 inches okay. Now the recommended positive ease for this sweater is two to six inches okay. So if my actual bust measurement is 38.5 let's take it at the smallest measurement 38.5 if i add two inches to that which is the minimum amount of ease that would be 40.5 yeah you with me <laughs> um so size one is 40 inches and size two is 41.75 now i didn't want it to be a particularly tight fitting garment so I thought 40 inches might only give me about one just one inch to an inch and a half positive ease whereas 41.75 inches is going to give me a good two to three inches of positive ease but maybe that's too much and then I looked at all the pictures and there were people sort of making size one that were were much smaller than me and had much a slimmer build than me and it looked either tight fitting or loose fitting on them and then there were people that had much larger frames than me or different body shapes than me where it looked fantastic in a in size one and then the size two it was all, all different body shapes fitting in different ways as well so I really got lost about what size to make uh, it's been really difficult <laughs> so in the end I thought I'm going to go for a size two and if I have to frog it, I have to frog it. What I don't want, because it's got this kind of shaping bit here, like the, the triangles that come down right here, I don't want those to look massive. I want them to look in proportion to me, rather than, I don't, it, does that make sense? So that's what I want to avoid. That's why I'm kind of hovering over which size to make. <sighs> it's really, really tricky. So th and then I'm wondering, maybe I should continue to make the size 
two, but go back down from a 4.5 millimeter needle, which gave me gauge, to four millimeters, which will give me a tighter gauge, but maybe then give me an in-between size. Um, and this is why I don't cast it on, because then my mind starts to whir and I don't know what to do. Whereas really what I should just do is go, oh, I'll just cast it on and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? I'll just frog it back. I'm not gonna be holding it double with the mohair. I'm going to introduce the mohair as um, Antasia. I'm also now worried that the contrast between the two blues is going to be too much and that maybe this needs to be darker. So I'm panicking about that too. And basically, I'm just in one big situation of massively overthinking it. It's never going to happen, is it? Because I'm just going to spend too much time panicking about it. Anyway, that's the as if tea. I can't wait to make it because I really want to wear it. It'd be fantastic to get that done and wear it in Scotland, wouldn't it? It's just, at this rate, I'm just gonna be worrying about it until I'm 90 years old. Right, so that's another imminent one. Then another imminent project that I've got is, um, I decided to make another waru shawl. So I made a waru shawl last year and I love it and I, it's all I've worn all winter. I, it's the shawl I reach for every day because of its size and I just love everything about it and I want to make another one. So I pulled out some yarn from my stash. I need four colours and I was undecided on the fourth. So these are the, four, the th first three colours that I have pulled out. I'm not sure what order I'm going to do them in, whether I want, so it's gonna be in this order either Either this yarn will be the bit you see when I've got it wrapped around me, this will be the bit at the top here, or it'll be this yarn that'll be at the top and then it fades down. So I can't work out which colour I want to be seen most when I've got my coat on, if that makes sense. Um, or I might swap them around and do it like that actually, because I do quite like the idea of having, oh, actually no, that I like that. I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, so blue's gonna be at the top, it's going to fade into this one, then go into yellow, and then I just need a colour for the border that goes along the bottom. But I figured by the time I get to here, I've got time to have a little play about and decide and think about what I want to do. I could always go back to the blue at the bottom, so depending on how much yarn it uses. So that's what I'm going to do. So these three yarns, this is Mrs S Creations. Um, this is on her titanium sock base, which is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. Uh, and the colourway is Seascape, which is absolutely lovely. What a gorgeous colour. And that was a lovely gift from Jilly herself, the dyer. Um, she gave as a scheme to give away and she sent one for me as well. And this is the one we kept. My daughter's helped me choose which colour to keep. So I'm really looking forward to getting to use it, to, to, get, to getting to use that. Um, the next one was a gift from Melissa, who is... Um, Atomic Ranch yarns, uh, although this isn't one of her yarns. This is by Bumblebee Acres. It's 75% Superwash American Corridale and 25% Nylon. It is an Outlander inspired colourway and it's called Dragonfly in Amber, which is a really pretty colour. And this is the little card for Bumblebee Eggers. And then the third colour is one that I bought a little while ago because I couldn't resist it. Um, the base is the Strictly Sock Base. It's a fingering weight colour in, uh, fingering weight yarn in the colour Char Char Charming. And it was one of Sam's um, Betsy Makes um, colours. She did a, a sort of an official colourway for the Strictly Sock Along the year before last. And this was one of the ones that wasn't the official one, um, but was still um, Strictly inspired. So Char Char Charming. And I couldn't live without it and I had to buy some. And it's sparkly as well. So pretty. I really, really like this one. I'm really glad to find a project where it's going to be in such a lot of use. So yeah, there you go. So those are my three colours for my new Waru shawl. I just need a fourth, but I'm gonna get started and see what happens. See what speaks to me as I go. Let's pop those back up there. Um, okay, God, I just feel like I'm yabbering on and on and on. Quarter past 10, okay, not too bad. 
Okay, in the line of attack, in my little uh, pouch here that my friend Erica, my real life friend Erica, bought me um, when I was very, very ill. Um, yeah, so in here, I have got a project that you've seen off and on, and you're probably like, yawn, that one again. So this, um, this kind of relates to something I spoke about last time. Um, thank you to everyone who commented about the socks that I had been making during a very difficult time in my life, and my dad was very unwell. Um, from uh, brain cancer and I'd been making some socks and I had to stop knitting them because I just didn't want to remember the sad times knit into those socks. So I put them away and I think the general consensus and I agree is frog them because it has been two years now and my gauge has changed and my knitting style has changed and I don't, they're toe up socks and I prefer top down now. And I've learned a lot about knitting socks in that time. So the general consensus is frog them, start again, knit some happy memories. So that's exactly what I'm going to do and I just want to thank you for all your very kind comments about that and for understanding my, you know, that sort of weird thing that I think we as crafters do have is associating what we're working on during times of happiness or sadness. Anyway, this is one of these projects. So when um, my dad was in hospital, I had a project that I always knit when I was sitting by his bedside. And it wasn't always easy when my dad was unwell to, to sit and knit quietly because my dad, he had brain cancer and Parkinson's and there was all kinds going on in his brain. And it made him very, very agitated and upset and uncomfortable all the time. So visits to my dad when he was dying were very distressing, all, every single visit. It was a very distressing time. But if he did sleep, I knit. And I knit my sister a pair of socks in the Cheer Up Buttercup colourway. And my sister, had, this is a little French meadow yarn. Um, and my sister had bought it for me. So I knit her a pair of shorty socks with that yarn. And then I had some yarn left over and I decided just to knit a tube. And I was gonna turn them into socks, but I actually worked out that if I wanted to turn this into socks, well, there wouldn't be enough tube, basically, even with like contrast heels and toes and everything. I think I'd be hard pressed to get um, two individual socks. So what I'm going to do is turn them into mittens or wristers. Um, to uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to divide them. I'm going to cut into them and divide the tube, and then I'm going to put um, some rib at either end. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm even going to put in a thumb hole. Um, I think I'm just literally going to do a little bit of rib at the end. I've got. What have I got? <laughs> what have I got? I've got, okay. I've got this amount of the dark gray that I used at the very ends here. I've got this amount of the main color left, so that's not really enough to do anything with. And I've got this lovely sparkly gray, which goes really well with it as well. So I've got options for sort of contrasting colors to do a sort of finishing rib. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. And this has been, languishing and I've been thinking about this for far far too long now so this is in the line of fire for the next two weeks before the next podcast is to turn this tube into whatever it's going to become and finish it off okay so hold me accountable to that <laughs> if I don't talk about it next time make sure you give me a nudge okay Giveaway time. Uh, the lovely Christine Gladwin of Sweet Lavender Knits, uh, she's got the Sweet Lavender Knits podcast, um, last year released her very first sock pattern. They were called the Downtown Shorty Socks. And for a limited time, she offered it for free. And somebody very kindly alerted me to it on Instagram. And I rushed over there and quickly downloaded the free pattern. And then I used though, that pattern to make my Strictly Socks for 2019. I will put a picture of the finished uh, socks up here. I don't have them anymore. They have been given to Lilia and she has not taken them off since I've given them to her. She absolutely loves them. It's such a lovely pattern and it's a really effective kind of design along the front, which works really well with variegated yarn. Um, anyway, Christine got in touch because she'd, she'd known I'd been talking about the my socks and how much I love them. And she said, would you like a, path, a, a copy of that pattern to give away to one of your viewers? And I said, 
yes please thank you very much i will have that so um she has very kindly given us a copy of that pattern to give away to a lucky winner i'm going to open a thread on ravelry this time um for you to enter the giveaway because it was a little bit overwhelming last time um doing it in the comments so if you hop over to the link that i'm going to put underneath this video uh to the ravelry thread and the prompt is going to be because the socks are called downtown shorties i'm going to say tell me about your local town um because i know that my subscribers are from all over the world and i really love to hear about all the places that you're from so yeah it's really lovely okay let's move on to incoming i've just realized that one of my things is over there all right the first thing i wanted to talk about in incoming was the new pom pom magazine and i was really pleased to get this because i thought my subscription had run out i didn't realize i had one more to come so that was really good my mum bought me a subscription to pom pom for my birthday last year and this is my very last one and how can we just talk about the front cover and how gorgeous is it? Not only do we have a woman of colour color on the cover, which is brilliant representation, she's in a wheelchair as well. So I showed Lilia this, my eldest daughter, and I said, what do you think of this magazine cover? And Lilia will be 14 next month. Um, and she said, um, she went, oh, she said, that's lovely. I said, but what would you say about it? What do you notice about it? And she said, representation. And I was, I was like, I was proud of her because it's something they learn about in school and it's something I never learned about in school. And it just gives me, I don't know, some hope, some hope for the future. I think the next generation will do better, I think. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, she thought that was a lovely cover and she really liked that top as well. And um, there were a few things in here. Well, basically, the first pom-pom I ever got, I kind of looked at it and went... Mm, don't really like any of those patterns and then since then I've wanted to make just about everything that's come through no, not everything but a lot of the things and I just wanted to share with you the crochet pattern that's in this particular one it is is the mm, I'm not gonna be able to say this the pattern is called Veyu it's by Lana Joy J-O-I-S um, and it is for a shawl pattern let me see if I can get so you can get a bit of the detail i don't want to show you the pattern itself so there's it on the back of a chair i might have to crop this a bit to get in case i'm filming any of the pattern that's it on a chair that's it on the mod on the model there and the shape of it is there any pictures of the full shape of it the pictures are just gorgeous i think they had the, they had a guest art director and it was Ocean of um, Ocean by the Sea. She's a yarn dyer. She takes and she writes poems and um, takes sort of really kind of artistic photos on Instagram. She's really worth following. She's Ocean by the Sea, and she just she writes. It's it's like um, her feed is like a poetry feed, but accompanied by these wonderful pictures, and it's about yarn and knitting and it honestly i can't describe it but it's beautiful you should definitely go and check her out i'm trying to find a picture to see if there's one where it's all stretched out but i don't think there is that's quite a good one to kind of give you an idea it's a triangular shawl basically um and i really like it and i've got um some yellow yarn enough to make it so i'm really tempted to make that shawl it's really really pretty but there's some good the theme for this issue is air um and all of the patterns are kind of inspired by the theme of air this is lovely too this is oh i can't say any of the names obeyed by nat natalia i'm gonna try sinel shishikova look at that it's, it's shown in two different colorways there which I hope you can see. Yeah, really gorgeous patterns in here. I really, really like that. I'd make it a bit longer though. I think that kind of cropped size would look a bit weird on me, but I really, really like the detail all along the top. That's a close up of the detail. Yeah, so that's the latest pom-pom issue. I really like pom-pom magazine. The articles are brilliant. There's always a recipe. The pattern's always good. It just feels like a really, I know I've said it before, but it feels like a really considered grown-up um, 
publication. I think um, there's a lot of work goes into this and I think um, it shows. Honestly, I'm boring myself now. I hope you're still with me. Um, whoops. So last week was half term and I took uh, Lilia down to Folkestone on the, coast, the Kent coast to visit her friend. She was gonna stop over there for a couple of nights and uh, I drove her down there and while we were there, we went for lunch with her friend and her friend's mum because we used to um, be neighbours uh, before they moved down there. So we all went for lunch and then we had a little walk around the shops and we went to a charity shop. And when we were there, Jenny, who's um, my friend, who's the mum of Lilia's friend, picked up this book in the charity shop and she said, oh, have you read this? I've read it, it's an absolutely beautiful book. You should definitely read it. And it's a pound and it was in the charity shop so the money goes to the charity shop. And I said, oh no, I'll get that. And then we went to Primark and while they were all trying stuff on in the changing rooms, I was stood outside reading the book in the changing rooms. And then when we got home, I kind of sat down and read it for a little bit more. And now what I've done is I keep it in the kitchen and I just pick it up whenever I've got five minutes and I have a quick read. And it is so far, I don't know where it's going, don't know anything about the story. And if you do, no spoilers in the comments, please. I don't want to know. Um, but it's beautifully written and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, so I will I will keep you updated on this and how I'm getting on with it. But it's got a lot of uh, very good comments on the back, obviously. And I think it won a prize. There you go. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction 2015. It's by Anthony Doer. Um, All the light we cannot see. It's set in Paris in the Second World War. So that is my other incoming thing that I wanted to share with you. Oh, I'm getting really hungry. It's all this talking. I'll just pop that there. Okay, and finally, where I get to talk about anything I like, and let's face it, I've talked too long already, so I'm not gonna spend too long rambling through on this. Um, I've got this beautiful book that a lovely uh, friend of this podcast, Hilary, sent to me, and it's got lobsters on it, because I love lobsters, and it says my, it says, Starry Eyes Alley, Little Drops of Wonderful. And inside, the pages are all dotty. Now, I was watching Sandra of Cherry Heart. I was binge watching some of her episodes and she was talking a bit about how she does bullet journaling, which is something I have tried in the past but didn't really get on with. But something kind of clicked and I thought, that's because you're doing it for things you, you don't want to do it for. And you don't have to do that. Like, I didn't find it very helpful for writing lists or keeping track of tasks or appointments. I have a diary, a family diary, and that works for us. I don't need it anywhere else. And as for lists, I prefer to have a list on a scrap bit of paper and cross it off as I go and then recycle it once it's done. I don't want it being carried forward and ticked off in a, in a notebook there for eternity. Um, but I did like the idea of tracking habits and reading and things like that. So I thought, well, just do that then. Just do what you want to do it for. So, and I had this book and I thought, I'm going to use it. I'm not going to just keep this book and never write in it. I'm going to use it for something that I'm going to find useful. So, and I'm no drawer and I'm no bullet journaler and everything that I've done in here is copied directly from Pinterest or Instagram. <laughs> so um, I did a little front page for February and I'm quite pleased with this because there's kind of like shady letters. And then I did a little thing and I'm crossing off, oh look, I'm way behind on that, about a week behind on crossing off my days of where we are. And then I've done a little quote at the top and it says, in February, there is everything to hope for and nothing to regret. And then I've just done some little flowers. I've left a couple of pages at the front to do like a, an index. And then on the next page, I've done a habit tracker. And I wanted to share this with you because I've spoken a lot before about how I've really been suffering with anxiety and it has kind of got really bad um, to the point where I'm, I'm getting some help for it, although I'm not convinced it's gonna work. Um, and I wanted to start tracking my, the things that I do in my life that might help with the anxiety. One thing I haven't added here, but I'm gonna change it for March, is tracking my moods. So that's something I would really like to do to see how the things I'm doing on a daily basis affect my mood on a daily basis. So I am tracking how much I read. So I've got read five pages or more. And then I, and as you can see, I'm not doing very well. If it's grey, I haven't achieved that. Excuse my nails, by the way. I paint them to stop me biting them, but they do need doing again. Um, 
So grey means I haven't done it and green means I have done it. So up until, so I've already re read five pages today because I read when Phoebe was doing her reading this morning. Um, and I, I can then see easily how I'm doing throughout the month. These ones here that are crossed off are because I didn't start doing this until the 10th of February. So I didn't measure anything up until then. So I just crossed them off to show that they weren't recorded. Um, veggie means days that I've eaten vegetarian. And what I've done is for days that I've eaten vegetarian, like, like no meat at all, and it's gonna turn around a bit, I, um, I, I did green. And then if I've had a fish day, so say I've had, I haven't eaten any meat, but I have eaten fish, I color it blue. And if I've eaten meat, I color it gray. Two litres of water I do quite well on most days. I do drink a lot. Um, and then one of my things that, that my anxiety centres on a lot is I have a real problem with certain noises. Oh, good morning, Mr. Magpie. How's your lady wife? Single magpie. Oh, God, he's gone back again. Oh, he's haunting me. Magpies. I'm not very superstitious except for magpies. Um... Yeah, so one of the things I do have a real problem with is noise, um, specifically noise around the area, not the area, but where I live. So we have some neighbours that can be a little bit noisy, lovely, really lovely, but a little bit noisy sometimes. Um, and that causes me a great deal of anxiety and stress. So I wanted to monitor when that actually happened. Um, so I can look back and go, do you know what? You're getting yourself worked up about the possibility of something that's gonna happen, and it doesn't. And I don't wanna jinx anything, so touch wood. Here's my noise column, and as you can see, it's all gray. So since I started doing this from the 10th of February, I haven't had an incident of noise where I would have said that it was awful, but I have probably every day worried about it and spent a lot of time thinking about it and preparing for it and feeling very anxious about it even though it never happened. There's one little red line here because we did have a tiny bit of noise that really stressed me out in the week, but it lasted for 20 minutes and then it stopped. So that's what I'm trying to do is trying to show myself the reality rather than the fear that I live with in my head. Um, so I think it's gonna be useful as well to have a mood tracker alongside here or maybe an anxiety tracker. I need to sort of think about that. That magpie go away or at least bring your mate with you because then you'll be a good omen and not a bad omen right um 30 minute clean team tom i tried to do team tom but as you can see since uh, the 10th of february i have not done it mainly because i've been really busy and then it was half term but by 30 minute clean i mean the team tom 30 minute clean uh so yeah i was really good with it in january and yeah as you can see it's just been non-existent in february because it's all great Yoga and meditation and exercise, all grey. So I would have said to you, oh yeah, I do a fair amount of walking and exercise and yoga, but I haven't done any at all so far this month, which is it's very interesting to actually see it there in black and white, or grey and green, um, that you can see there's no yoga and meditation and there's no exercise and walking. I mean, granted, I walk about four kilometres a day, uh, on the school run on the days that I don't work so I do walk but I'm not uh, uh, this is above and beyond you know walking for exercise uh, five a day eating my fruit and vegetables um, as you can see I'm very good at that I do do that so when it comes to like nutrition my diet and water I do very well but when it comes to exercise and so on not so well so I think for March I'm going to do exactly the same but I'm going to um, put in a mood track as well and possibly an alcohol tracker. I'd quite like to see overall how much I, sort of how many days, you know, that I have alcohol free maybe. I think that would also be a good one. And then I've, this is copied completely off of someone on Pinterest or Instagram. It's um, books to read. And then I've gone round and I've looked at all the books that I've got stacked up on my bedside table, on my bookshelves that I haven't yet read. And then as I read them, I'm gonna color them in. So, these are all the books, so if you're interested, here they all are. Um, all the books that I've got lined up for the year. There's no way that I am going to read these books. And there will probably be other books that come along that I might end up reading before. Um, and I'm already reading, off this list, I'm already reading one, two, uh, three, four, 
four of them I'm already reading on a regular basis. I haven't added in all the light we cannot see and I haven't added in my um, book that I have in the bath. So I'm gonna add those. So I've always got quite a few books on the go for different occasions. So yeah, I think I'll do quite well, but I might not get them all read. What I'd quite like to do is maybe do little things so I can show when I've read half, show when I've read three quarters and all of that. So, so far as a tracking thing, I am really, really enjoying it. And um, yeah, so if you were interested in doing something similar, I would recommend it. I find it very, very um, eye-opening. Right, well done for sticking with me for that. I think this is gonna be quite a big, big editing job. So I will bid you farewell. I will see you in a couple of weeks, uh, but I will be filming a Woolality TV in between time. So the next podcast will be in about two weeks time, but in between there will be a little vlog. Sorry, I just spat at you then. <laughs> Apologies for that. There will be a little vlog of um, my crafty life in between. So I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Happy crafting. Bye.